Um, you know, since launch, as all of you are definitely aware, things have not gone exactly as planned. Um, so this is something that we're experimenting with because we know that there's not been a lot of communication from us, or certainly not clear communication about what's going on with the project, where we are with things, why are things taking so long? This is our attempt to sort of, you know, try to fix that situation. Well, we finally have some news on the future of Cyberpunk 2077. It's been a while. I've not been making a lot of videos as I'm still moving into my own house. But then again, CD Projekt Red Cyberpunk 2077 for the last couple of months have been pretty quiet. And the game did return to the PlayStation Store. That was a big thing. CDPR put out some advertisements which highlighted the biggest update yet. That was back in June and there was no update. That confused a lot of people. And Cyberpunk 2077 did sell on the PlayStation Store very, very well that first month, but it has since just dropped off. It is flatlined, and many question, really, if there is a future for this game. That is still a conversation that is going on every single day. This is a very divisive game. People talking about CDPR should just move on to The Witcher. Some saying, no, they need to save this game. There's potential here. But after eight months, we're still in this patch phase, and CD Projekt Red have been emphasizing that they are in a better better state now and I mean yeah because the game should not have released in December of 2020 this game was something that should have released this year and arguably next year that was something that CD Projekt Red developers inside were saying before launch reportedly but regardless we did get our first live stream I guess from CD Projekt Red in which they discussed the future and it did not go well Many in the chat were just blasting them, roasting them, many pointing out that a lot of the changes that are now coming to the game was already done by modders, and then just many dissatisfied with what free DLC is going to be, and it is indeed just smaller things like The Witcher 3. So if you were expecting some giant new features like being able to change your appearance in the game, or some other quality of life stuff like AI being like overhauled, or maybe the police system actually receiving a complete overhaul, or anything like that along those lines of new spaces, anything major, that doesn't seem to be what's going to be happening with the Cyberpunk 2077 free DLC. It really is just cosmetic stuff like new outfits, new appearances for a couple of characters, and some outfits. We'll see if maybe there is some bigger stuff coming down the line. But right now, it just doesn't look like that. And CD Projekt Red's developers really did emphasize that at the beginning of their live stream today that many in the community have been getting excited about all kinds of brand new crazy features. CDPR is going to go overboard with free DLC because of how rough the launch was. And that just is not going to be the case. At one point, a CD Projekt Red developer, the senior game designer or quest designer, Patrick Mills, did discuss the disappointment. This is what he had to say. I know a lot of people were disappointed with this game. Like, I really do. Like, I know. A lot of us were disappointed with this game, and I really appreciate those of you who have stuck with us, who believe in this project, who believe in this game, who believe in this world. Like, I it, sincerely, when I see you guys posting your, posting your fan art or your screenshots or talking about the characters that affected you, it's wonderful. It really, really, really makes it worth it, and I appreciate it. Thank you very much. Throughout the live stream today in which CDPR's team discussed patch 1.3 and some of the first free DLC, the live stream, like I said before, it was just very confrontational. You could see that the CDPR team was really trying to stay positive, but if you read down that Twitch chat, it was constantly a barrage of, I'll just say, a lot of negative messages, and there were some mixed and obviously positive things things but just seems like there's a lot of disappointment from people with what they were seeing because they really expected something ginormous and CDPR did call this their biggest update yet for the game and if you look at the patch modes it is there is a lot of changes but it's again it's that same phase we were back in like January it's just long lists of very quest specific changes and we're not seeing anything groundbreaking like AI overhauls at least yet now I did want to go over what they discussed um, point by point because they did they did mention quite a few things things. So like I said before, they did call this the biggest update yet. And now within Cyberpunk 2077, there is a new additional content tab, which you can see where you have all of your free DLC or DLC expansions installed. We obviously have three of them right now. 
We'll talk about those more in a second. They did have an, add a new smaller feature. You can now craft in bulk. Again, this is something that modders fixed a long time ago, but CDPR, again, really wanted to emphasize that other platforms don't have that ability and making this work for like the PlayStation 4 and Xbox One was a lot harder than it, it may seem. Now you can now double auto saves. That was something mentioned in the patch notes, which we'll go over a little bit in a second. You'll receive less messages from fixers about cars. Again, some of these changes are great if maybe a new game plus was here but like for myself i've played cyberpunk 2077 well over like 150 hours i know some people have a lot more than that and i just don't have any reason to come back yet and seeing messages from fixers about cars i don't that's not something i have to deal with anymore very late uh, they did mention more quality of life changes are going to be coming. They won't be revealing anything specific as they've learned their lesson. That was a big point throughout the live stream. CDPR's developers saying that they just don't want to overpromise or set dates because they just don't know if they're going to be able to meet them. And I mean, it, it is true. That it's something that's uh, backfired on them various times throughout this year and last year. At one point during this stream, a CD Projekt Red developer did discuss some of the Reddit lists of broken perks, and they said that they are now working on fixing them all and within the patch notes they did fix some of the broken perks and again this is something that not everybody knew about but quite a few perks and uh different things within cyberpunk 2077 have been broken since launch like if you had acquired a certain perk more times than not a lot of them just were not working at all and now it looks like cdpr has been paying attention to the community and now we're working on solving those issues which is again just another point why this game should not have been released now one thing that is i guess incorrect Encouraging. They, the CDPR team said that the game is in a state to concentrate now on more quality of life stuff. So it does seem like more maybe police overhaul AI changes could be coming in the future. That's a big maybe at this point because it's been eight months and we still have not seen major changes and well, there's other reasons we'll get to as we go down the list of things that were said within this stream now they said respecking attributes is something that's difficult for them and they're not sure it's going to be possible that's why when they detailed the other day on twitter about you now being able to respec more easier because now there's like a little option within the menu just to spend like twenty thousand eddies and you can make it possible that's great and all but people want to change their entire character they don't want to have to start over and mods obviously on pc you can do that easily but on console and such it seems like that's something that may not at all be possible which is disappointing but they really said it, it, the problem is that there's other things that are tied to those stats and as you advance which makes it a problem which is something that the chat and many people did not like to hear now this is something that really got a lot of attention which i don't really know why but nibbles the cat in our apartment now does more he will roam around i guess uh, that was something that they talked about, Cat AI, spent a considerable amount of time on that. There, there's a reason why a lot of people said that this didn't need to be a stream, this all could have just been listed in the patch notes, and yeah. Victor Vector, now we, let's get to the actual small DLC, the free DLC. We have a Victor Vector small DLC, and it comes after you meet Dex in his limo at the beginning of the game. And we get two cosmetic items, which are not legendary, and it doesn't seem like they have many mod slots, which kind of makes this pretty useless, but you get a bright red jacket, which does look pretty cool and you get a multi-layer jacket so not a reason to really come back to the game but there are two new outfits available now something that's i guess a little bit better we have a ghost town quest reward that's a quest i think the first one with pan am and depending on a choice you make i believe if you choose not to go down the revenge route with pan am you get a quartz bandit vehicle from rogue uh, it's like an orange mid-tier 170 mile per hour -ish top uh car it looks pretty cool uh, i'll say that i don't i don't really like driving in cyberpunk 2077 outside of the motorcycles but it does look pretty cool i'll give it that and then the last piece of free dlc was a johnny silverhand appearance an alternate one and it looks it looks all right but i'll probably stick to the the same one we already have and those were the free dlcs and again this did not go over well with chat who found this extremely underwhelming now some of the other changes that were mentioned v's expressions in the mirror will now work well, that was an issue the minimap now zooms out when in car. This was a big thing that was talked about the other day. And CDPR really emphasized that this was a memory issue, which made it difficult for them to fix. And they say, while it's not that difficult to fix on PC, they said, again, on the PlayStation 4 and Xbox One, this was something that was very, very difficult. And uh, yeah, like I said, the CDPR devs emphasized the difficulty with patches for released games, mentioning changing slash fixing things, sometimes really simple things, breaks other parts of the game. They compared it to open heart surgery. 
And the response that I'm seeing from a lot of people to this remark is then just don't release a game that's unfinished. Because eight months later, this game is still getting really, really lengthy lists of fixes that really should not be here at this point. We should be concentrating on the future of this game, which is still not entirely too clear. We'll talk more about that in a second. And like I said before, they said memory management and streaming is a problem that they've been dealing with, but they're getting to a point where they're, they're happy with that and they'd be able to do more in the future. They did mention that minor AI and crowd AI improvements are here, but it doesn't seem like this is anything significant. They did mention some bigger changes will be coming later, but again, no specifics on that, so who knows when or if that'll actually happen. Another change that has been made is the journal in Cyberpunk 2077. It's now better organized, and it's easier to get related info to a quest or vehicle. So if you're playing one quest in Pacifica, you'll see some information about Pacifica, the map, and information related to that. I guess that's a nice quality of life improvement. Uh, the CD Projekt Red developers says that mod fixes are cool, but getting changes to console and other platforms is an issue for them. This is a part where your confrontation was going on, because the chat constantly was mentioning that modders already fix this stuff like a month after launch and it's taking you guys eight months to do this and this was cdpr's response saying that it's a lot harder on the xbox one and playstation 4 and again this is just another reason why this game probably should not have released on last gen consoles if this is just that much of a struggle but again this is none of their decision this is the executives who rushed this game out when this really should have just been a next gen or well PlayStation 5, Xbox Series X, PC game. Now, I should mention that at the beginning of the live stream, CD Projekt Red's developers mentioned that they were going to discuss more about Cyberpunk 2077's future. So a lot of us assumed we're going to hear information about the DLC expansions because they said they actually did specifically say they were going to mention that towards the end. And we also thought maybe we'd hear something about the next-gen versions, which were in August, and we have no idea what's going on with that. It's supposed to release by the end of the year, still nothing on that at all. And ultimately, CDPR didn't really say anything. The developers said that they were excited for the expansions that they're working on. That is, that's it. They said nothing more. They said, again, it'll be comparable to The Witcher 3. We already heard this before launch, and there was nothing more. And this goes back to the point where a lot of people were saying in the chat, and a lot of people are saying now, this just should not have been a live stream. There was no reason for any of this. You can call this the biggest update yet for Cyberpunk 2077. I see various developers happy about that. And yeah, I that's cool. That's nice, but you're just trying to get people riled up even more. There's a lot of, again, this game is very divisive. Now, they did release the patch notes, and again, like I said, before it's a lengthy list of all kinds of changes mostly related to quests that were broken with very minor things that went wrong but there are some other bigger things like the detection time of enemies now depends on game difficulty enemies on easier normal difficulties will now detect the player slower enemies on very hard difficulty will now detect the player faster enemies on very hard difficulty on only that difficulty alone will now be more aggressive when searching around when they are in an alerted state the ncpd will no longer react and turn hostile because of dead bodies in the open world. NCPD will now also react to hitting NPCs with a non-lethal weapon. Uh, they adjusted the damage process when shooting crowd NPCs while in combat, depending on distance and the weapon used. They've balanced some of the crafting specs for clothing mods. They balance the number of components required to craft clothing. Uh, then they, again, like I said before, they made various changes to some of the perks that were broken, like hit the deck. The perk will now work properly on knockdowned and staggered NPCs. And then there's a couple more that are listed here. Uh, then there are, again, some more performance issues. I do wonder how this will fix the PlayStation 4 and Xbox One versions, the, the base consoles, because from what I've seen, patch 1.2 made the PlayStation 4 version a ghost town. There's just no NPCs around. Performance is better, but it's just a ghost town. Now, they, the dynamic resolution scaling has been improved. There's improved frame rate consistency, resulting in fewer hitches and spikes, especially during combat. And they fixed a streaming issue affecting performance in the city center district. So maybe we'll get a couple of extra frames from that. That's, that's, that's a plus, that's a positive. And then it just goes on and on with all kinds of minor little fixes that have been added to various quests, the environments, the levels, and so on and so forth. But yeah, Cyberpunk 2077, we're still doing this eight months later with these 
very lengthy list of uh, fixes and stuff that's great but it just points to the fact that again this game just was not ready and as this goes on cyberpunk 2077 is suffering people have moved on i think right now from research i'm doing for a separate video there's like around 10 or 10 or so thousand players playing actively maybe this will bring the number a little higher with this new dlc probably not too much but 99 percent of the players are gone versus launch day and comparing that to the witcher 3 wild hunt i think the witcher 3 like averages around 30,000 players players a day which is pretty crazy for a game that came out in 2015 and isn't a full RPG like Cyberpunk is well intended to be. Anyway very interesting to see where this game goes further it does seem like CDPR is going to have more of these streams hopefully they have more information in their next one because if they don't it's going to be the same reaction which people are going to be blasting and roasting them and a lot of dissatisfied people just uh throwing their anger at the developers. So as it stands Cyberpunk 2077's future I really don't know what's make of it this was supposed to be a stream outlining some of it and they did they gave an idea of what we should expect from free dlc which isn't really much at all but beyond that i don't know what to expect from these uh dlc expansions the paid ones which are probably going to be coming next year are we going to see some really significant changes to the formula of cyberpunk because it doesn't seem like it if cdpr is really saying that they they can't make all these drastic changes because the game's already released that was something that they put a great emphasis on within this live stream but if you look at other games that went through disastrous launches, whether that be Anthem, the developers gave up on that. No Man's Sky at this point already had multiple huge updates. Fallout 76, it took a while. They eventually recouped. It took about a year or so, and now it's in a better place. I mean, say what you want about it. I know a lot of people still hate it, but it has a player base. But we'll have to see what, uh, what happens with Cyberpunk 2077. Uh, right now, nothing does look too encouraging, but this is a, I would say it's a great start, but this is something that probably should have happened eight months ago, or maybe seven, six months ago, not here in August of 2021, in which we're getting very close to the one year anniversary of Cyberpunk 2077's launch. Anyway, what do you make of the chat's reaction? Do you think they were overly harsh on the CDPR developers, or do you think that this was much needed criticism? Let me know your thoughts down in the comment section below, but thank you for watching. Make sure to leave a like if you did enjoy this video or if you found any informative value and make sure to follow my other social media accounts for updates on new videos links are always down in the description below i'm most active on twitter giving opinions on news that i do not always get into video form so do make sure to follow me over there also check out my discord for all sorts of discussion on games and again thank you for joining consider subscribing for more videos like this i'll see you later